Hello everyone. This is your most favorite teacher ever, Miss DeLuca. And today we are going to talk about ecological succession. I'm going to try and do the notes, but you all know my handwriting is super big. So let's see how it works. All right, so first we're gonna set up our Cornell style notes with a margin for notes and then a box at the bottom for a summary. Yes, I'm good at drawing lines. All right, so ecological succession. What does that mean? Well, in order to know what that means, first you need to know where it occurs. So what happens in a community? And a community is made up of populations of organisms. So for instance, a community of humans would be Dallas or Singley Academy. And they live in a common area. Okay, so for Singley Academy people, most of you live in Irving. Um, Dallas is a geographical area, so that makes up a community. Um, also things like deer, a deer that live in a certain part of the world like East Texas, um, those are all, it's a community of organisms. All right, so now a limiting factor is something that inhibits the growth of a population. And by inhibit, I mean stops or doesn't allow it to grow bigger, okay? So it's anything that limits an organism's ability to live in a particular environment. Okay, so an example of this would be say you're in Arizona and there is a lack of water. Okay, so that lack of water would cause grass to die which then would cause certain herd populations like cattle or sheep or deer to decrease because they eat grass and the grass can't grow because there's no water. So you won't have a large population of sheep wandering around the desert in Arizona because there's no water. Okay, and our last vocab word to know is tolerance. And that is the ability of living things to survive changes in the environment. So for instance, we just got done talking about plants. There are some plants that they have bred to be drought tolerant. And when you're drought tolerant, that means that those plants can survive without water for a longer period of time than that same plant that hasn't been bred with that trait. Okay, so I'll draw some lines here. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about succession. What is succession? Well, if you were talking about kings and queens, succession would be, let's say, the first person to be crowned king, and then they die, and then their son succeeds them, or their brother, or whoever, goes after them. 
So succession are things that happen in an order. In biology, succession is the process of gradual natural change and species replacement that takes place in the communities of an ecosystem over time. So what does that mean? Basically, it means the animals change or the plants change. They start growing in a place where they have never grown before, or they start growing back in a place that has been destroyed by something, okay? So I'm going to get a note card to do this next part. So you're going to divide it into two, okay? And then on one side, you're going to have primary succession. And then on the other side, you're going to have secondary succession. Okay, so here's primary succession. So let's say you have a volcano and it erupts, but it's underwater. So it forms an, a new island, okay? So we've got this island, it's just rock. It's lava rock that has solidified and it's just now sitting in the middle of the ocean. Well, we know that life loves to live. And so eventually, things are gonna crawl up here or come up here, and they're going to start inhabiting this place where nothing used to live, okay? That is called primary succession, okay? So it takes place on land where nothing lived before. It was just a rock. Okay. Those first species that crawl up onto that rock and start living there are called pioneer species. And eventually, those pioneer species, or PS, die to create soil for new plants. So basically, tiny little microorganisms like bacteria, some algae, they'll start creeping up on that rock. Then you'll have some plants like ferns or mosses that start to grow and they'll live there for a, a long time and eventually they'll die and their decomposing bodies will make soil and that soil will help new species of plants to grow like then you'll get trees and grasses and flowers and once you have trees and grasses and flowers then you can have things like insects and then once you have things like insects you can have Things like birds, because birds eat insects, some of them. And then once you have birds, you could have little mammals, and it just grows from there, okay? So that's primary succession. Secondary succession takes place, so let's say you have a forest, and it's such a pretty forest, and then somebody throws a cigarette butt out the window, and that forest catches on fire, oh no, run away, help, oh no, it catches on fire, and now it's burned to a crisp, and all you have are these little dead stubs, okay, lots of things used to live in this forest, and now they don't anymore, 
It's all burned to the ground. Secondary succession now is what happens when life comes back. So we burned the forest to the ground, and now things are going to come back and live there. Okay, usually it's after a natural disaster, like fire or floods or hurricanes. Okay. And it actually takes a shorter time to reach its full potential. And its full potential is what we call a climax community. Okay, so now underneath succession here, I want you to write climax community. And basically, when we say climax community, we mean climax as the highest point. It's somewhere where lots of things have grown for a long time and there's nothing new coming in. It's just a very stable environment. It's usually where no people live because uh, people are very disruptive. So a climax community is a very stable community formed after primary or secondary succession where little to no change occurs. Okay? So what I would also like you to do now is take your notes, write a little summary, maybe add some questions down the side, and thanks for watching.